Come on in, everybody. Y'all ready for this good old review? <laughs> Love and Hip Hop New York. New York. New York. <laughs> Love and Hip Hop New York um, Season 9. And I think it's Episode 2. And it's appropriately titled The Blame Game. <laughs> So everybody come on in, make sure you, um, on your way in, you like the video. If you're just strolling through and came across my channel, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, those of you on, uh, Instagram, my YouTube channels are, the one I go live from is Tanya Knows No Limit. So if you want to, um, subscribe to that one, um, to catch my lives on YouTube and also, to catch all my other videos. I have lots and lots of videos on uh, YouTube. But also, um, my other YouTube channel is Tanya's Primetime TV. So for those of you on Instagram, please go over there and subscribe to both of those channels. Tanya Knows No Limit. Tanya Knows No Limit. And also, <laughs> also Tanya's Primetime TV media reviews and those of you guys on youtube please make sure you go to instagram and look me up tanya primetime tv all one word uh, we live right now on uh youtube and we are live right now on instagram so everybody again come on in like the video share the video push that share button and share it on your twitter on your facebook on your Instagram, you know, whatever social platform you use. Do that for me, please, and thank you very kindly. And we can get started on this review. Hey, everybody on YouTube, hit me up in the chat. Let me know who's watching, who that is, who that is, who that is. Um, <coughs> comment. Feel free to comment throughout the live. Feel free to um, comment on anything I speak about, any of the characters, any of the scenes. <laughs> That was in the show. And um, again, the title of this show was is Season 9, Episode 4, The Blame Game. And the show started off um, at Jules and Kimbella's house. And Kimbella, you know, she's been stressing like crazy over, you know, the fact that she does not know what is going to happen to her men, to her children's father. You know, Jules, uh, last episode, we learned that he can either take the plea for up to 18 months, or um, if he doesn't do the plea and he takes it to trial, then he can get up to, I think they said five to 10 years. Uh, I think it's really sad that Jules couldn't kick the drugs on his own, and that's for anybody who can't kick the drugs on their own, and then they end up doing something illegal while on the drugs and wind up in jail or in prison. Um, because if he was not on them drugs, I'm pretty sure he probably would not have <laughs> forgotten that he had a gun in his luggage when he tried to go through the airport. But you know what? Them choices uh, can be very, 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 very hard to consider. Um, a lot of people can, you know, confess that they're innocent. I'm completely innocent. I don't care if you believe me or not. I didn't do it. But again, those choices are very hard to consider, you know, plead or go to trial because a lot of innocent people go to trial and they end up in jail sometimes for life. Um, and then on the flip side, if you take the plea deal, it's basically copping, you know, to, you know, the charge like, okay, they did it. They're going to take the plea, you know, and that's not always the case, but then it looks bad when you get out, you know, for that shorter period of time, it looks bad regardless how much time you went, whether you plea or whether you go to trial, it's like, okay, when you get out, you got to fill out job applications. You got to fill up, trying to find an apartment, a house. So regardless, if you take the plea or, you know, go to trial, the consequences are sometimes the same when you get outside those bars. So, um, either situation can damage you, you know, from having that record. But, uh, when you are truly, truly innocent, you don't want to be looked at as a criminal for taking a plea. And when it comes to, um, 
Alexis. Alexis. I feel so bad for her. What y'all think about her and that uh, Fetty, Fetty Wap? That that boy, Fetty Wap. Uh, mm. <laughs> I just don't understand. Her baby is so, so young and has already been through so much. And I shouldn't say her baby, their baby, you know, is so young and has been through so much. Um, She is really like literally a miracle baby. If there was ever a miracle baby, this is she. I mean, she had three brain surgeries. She has a shunt in her head. Um, to make all the fluid drain from her head to her stomach. Uh, she also has to do, um, speech therapy when she gets, you know, old enough to, you know, talk and, you know, try to gather her little words together. Um, speech therapy, you know, physical therapy. Uh, she has stimulation therapy. Um, she has to get breathing treatments throughout the day. I mean, I really, 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 really hate deadbeats. I hate them. Uh, disgusting. But um, what's even worse than a deadbeat dad is a deadbeat dad who does not be there for their very sickly child. I mean, a child already needs the support of the mom and dad. But when you are a very, very sick child, like I told y'all before, my oldest son was a very sick child till about the age of 12. And it's hard trying to take care of everything and do everything on your own and missing work all the time because they in and out the hospital. So I really feel for her. My heart goes out to her. Um, I really hope Fetty Wap steps up. You know, she claims allegedly he don't do shit, you know. So I don't know. He promised last, matter of fact, he promised last episode he was going to do better. He was going to step up. So, you know, again, we'll see. But I do love how her grounds was like, if a father is not consistent, then that's not a father. Now, some people might disagree with Grams when she made that comment, but hey, I get it, Grams. I get it. Um, their child's a child's father, you know, if they come around every now and then, once a month. Now keep in mind, we're not talking about um special situations. Like my youngest son's dad lives in a different city. So he gets here as often as he can. Like, I mean, his games, his uh, activities, you know, extracurricular activities, you know, uh, athletic activities, um, you know, him and his, you know, his girlfriend that he's been with, you know, he ain't been single since we broke up. We broke a long time ago. So, you know, um, he has another family and everything, and he gets here in the city as much as he wants, takes care of him, provides for him, pays child support, pays his phone bill. Every year he gets a brand new iPhone. I mean, that man does a lot, and he's, you know, in a different city. So there are certain circumstances where a child and a father cannot see each other all the time, but in the instances where... <laughs> The child and the father live in the same spot. The man has no excuse not to uh, be in their child's life. That's really, 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 really horrible. And I cannot stand that. Um, so to me, I'm with Grams. You know what? Somebody who is not there when they could be, that's not a father. You know, and the same with moms. If she ain't there when she could be, that's not a mother. A father and a mother, they actually father and they mother their children. Otherwise, you a dad. <laughs> you a mom. You know, what a mom, what a pop. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's like, <laughs> because I just feel like, you know what? A father and a mother is not just going to come around every now and then, every full blue moon, every holiday, you know, every birthday, like an aunt or an uncle, you know, that's just how I feel. So y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. But that's, that's just me, how I feel. But anyway, um, Jules, he was at the studio, you know, he went to the studio to pay a visit to Mano, who recently just finished a 10-year bid. Um, Mano has gone through a lot himself. He's been in the street. You know, we heard him talk about it. We didn't see him over the years in the news. You know, he's one of those street dudes and he knows what it's like to want and get his freedom back after that 10 year bid. But like I said, last episode, I'm going to still give Jules the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he was just high as heck and left the airport and unknowingly 
had a gun in his luggage. Um, <laughs> a lot of people think, like he said, that he just dipped. Like he saw the cops and he just dipped because he was scared because he knew he had a gun in his suitcase. Um, he's like, why would I just run? Like, I mean, why would I take a gun in the airport? He's like, I'm not stupid. Like I said, I'm gonna just give him the benefit that he was high as heck because anybody who was dumb enough to take a gun in an airport and try to actually put it in a suitcase and roll it through the uh, metal detector has to be a complete idiot and wants to die. <laughs> they wants to have a gun put on them by the security guards. But um, anywho, so again, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. But now he needs advice from Mano, you know, in deciding, helping him to decide what moves to make, you know, plea or trial, plea or trial. In the end, Mano was like, you know what? It's all about family. You know, I can give you some advice and everything, but, you know, in the end, it's all about you, your family, your girl, your kids. So, you know, he got a decision to make. Well, him and her, they got a decision to make. And then um, we move over to Jonathan. Kim Bella and Sin, they all had met up for drinks. At least I think that's what they were. I couldn't tell what was in them cups. Could have been juice. Could have been shit. I don't know what was in them cups, but I'm gonna just say for drinks. Um, Jonathan, you know, he had a d dilemma because he and Yandy right now, him and Yandy are cool, but Kimbella and Yandy are so not cool. <laughs> They're not on good terms right now. Evidently, um, uh, from Kimbella's side of the story, they got into it over a situation, you know, involving Mendeecee's other baby mama. And Kim felt like Yandy threw her under the bus. But as far as the birthday post on IG, I'm like, come on now, Kim. I have a bestie and we don't talk every day. But even if we go months without talking and I was to post happy birthday on IG and would tag her, it wouldn't have went down like that. Shit, she would have been like appreciative. She would have been like, thanks for the shout out. Love you, bestie. You know, let's turn up. Let's go out. Let's go for drinks. It don't matter how much, you know, when, you have, when you're a real friend, it don't matter how much time, you know, comes between y'all. It's like y'all just never, never, you know, <laughs> stop. Yeah, like your tractors didn't even stop. You just start all over like you never skip the beat i mean that's how it is with real friends but i guess they ain't real friends <laughs> but anywho um she pro she was like you know what uh she's jonathan is like well why you know what's going on and then he was talking she was talking about she ain't got no friends i'm like she said i ain't got no friends no more friends i just got you <laughs> And I just got you. And I was like, okay, um, all right. <laughs> Let's see how this works out. But uh, Jonathan, he got issues now with Juju. And Kimbella is now cool with Juju. So it's like a switch and rule took place. But okay, before I agree with Jonathan, you know that Juju is a fake because he was going off. She's a fake. She's out of, you know, whatever, because he's mad. Um, I guess they had made plans. Well, Jonathan, actually, he had came up with this idea of her and him, you know, starting a radio show together. And he gave her the idea. He wanted to do it with her. Now, what it seems like happened is Juju, she went ahead. This is what he said. She went ahead and she, you know, set it up and use his ideas to have her own show. Now, me, at that point, I was like, okay, I need to hear this, from, so, hear the other side from Juju before I agree that she's a fake. I need to hear her defend herself, you know, <laughs> because I'm like, what? That don't sound like Juju Licious. She did that. <laughs> and I like me some Juju. So, you know what? I'm like, you know what? I need to hear her side. But I mean, it just seems like it must have been a really long break since the last season because it seemed like everybody done fell out everybody done either fell out or unfriended each other <laughs> like for real but why do y'all okay why did y'all think yandy invited juju to jonathan's party now 
Everybody up to that point <laughs> knew how Jonathan feels about Juju. Um, Juju was like, what party? What birthday party? Where's my invite? Mr. Jonathan didn't invite me to his party. And she seemed like generally concerned, like generally, like she generally cared or she was upset or, you know, sad about not being invited. And Yandy was like, well, um, uh, um, er, um, uh, well, you know what? Um, you definitely invited. You definitely coming. And I was like, oh Lord. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't come. But anywho, um, <laughs> what about Sin and Joe? Sin, she done got so fed up with him not spending any quality time, you know, quality time with her, uh, that she done took to sleeping in the bedroom with their child. And I was like, no, they don't have a full-size bed in the nursery room next to the baby bed. I have never seen that before. I'm like, what happened to rocking chairs? <laughs> what happened to rocking chairs or a lazy boy or they, she had... A uh, full size, matter of fact, it looked like a queen. It could have been a queen size bed right next to the baby bed in the nursery. I'm like, okay, okay. But uh, <laughs> did y'all catch that? Uh, did y'all catch that? Um, when Juju, when she met up with Cambella to discuss her and Yandy's uh, relationship, um, friendship. Like, did y'all catch that when Kim was like, her and Juju are not friends anymore? And when Juju said, but y'all have a long time friendship. Kim was like, and so what? What you trying to say? You know, I've had plenty of long time friendships. And I'm thinking, okay, so if you didn't have a lot of long time friendships, and right now you talk about you don't have no friends, that might be when you want to look in the mirror and try to figure out why you don't have any friends anymore. I'm I'm just saying. I'm just saying to anybody who don't have any friends, like any real friends, you got to figure out something. Because everybody should have at least one real friend in their life that they can confide in and talk to whenever they want and trust in them. <laughs> at least one. But um, as far as... Uh, as far as Sin and Joe, you know, I think he got the message. You know, he woke up. He made breakfast in bed. Granted, it was just toast and cereal and I think some orange juice or something. But, you know, he 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 finally compromised with her. She wanted to take a vacation. First, he was like, nope, we ain't doing it. No vacations. But it seemed like he actually compromised with her and he made plans to go on vacation so they can work on their relationship or work on each other, I should say, because <laughs> he was like, I'm about to put in some work, 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 work. She was like, hey, hey. You know, she got all excited. She about to get some. But anywho, hopefully she gets some before she even takes that trip because... Like I said last time, you better get that girl some of that package or she gonna find it somewhere else. But anyway, anyway. um, As far as uh, Juju, when she asked, when she later asked him, you know, would she be speaking at uh with Jan with Jandy? Why well, I want to say Jandy? Um, when she later asked Juju, you know, would she be uh? I'm sorry, twisting my words up. When Juju later asked Kim, would she be open to speaking with Yandy at Jonathan's party? Kim was like, you know, you're invited. Were you invited? Like. She's shocked because she know that Jonathan sat there and told her specifically, they ain't rocking no more. You know, they ain't kicking no more. They ain't cool no more. She was just like, she, you know what, well, what I heard was, what had happened was, and Jonathan said what he had said, but, you know, she planned to come anyway. <laughs> she can to come anyway. And I still don't know why Yandy invited her too. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I think there was some messy stuff going on. What y'all think? I think that was just messy. But anywho, you know what? When it comes to Alexis Sky, Alexis Scott, she is so lucky. You know, she has a little baby. Um, She is very lucky that she has her grams because she's not at home. I think she said she's from Atlanta. 
And she had came up to New York, you know, for her music career and everything. So her grams lives there. She's very lucky to have her grams babysit for her so she can handle her music business. And wasn't it like I said last week that Fetty Wap said he would do better at helping to raise their daughter? But when he called Alexis and he hit her up and told her, you know, I want to holler at you. You know, I, I don't know specifically if it was to holler at her about their child, but I'm just going to assume it was. And he wanted to meet on mutual, you know, uh, territory. So she he told her to meet her at um, meet him at the studio. And when she showed up at the studio, he wasn't even there. He stood her up. I was like, no, he didn't do a no call, no show on her. I'm like, her grams, if he, grams is smart, <laughs> her grams is smart, and I like her, she was like, if he don't step up and do what he should, then just fire him, you know, just fire him, handle what you need to do at, to, to try to get, you know, him to take care of the child, if he don't want to do it, that's when you fire him, and you get the courts to help you make him do what he's supposed to do, now, granted, Granted, going to court does not necessar necessarily guarantee the child is going to get to spend time with their father, but at least, you know, they can try to make them pay for, you know, some child support, some daycare. I mean, the child is a sickly child. She has all these things going on and she's up there like, I don't need his money. I got my own money. That's not the point. That's not, no matter how much money a woman has, that does not mean she need to foot all the bills. It does not. It absolutely doesn't. <laughs> so I'm with her grams. You know, do what you got to do. And if he don't want to act right, then that's when, you know, you get other people involved. But then again, I question her uh, decision to um, sign with that label because, again, she knew he worked, not worked there, but she knew he was signed to them. And so I'm thinking out of all the labels that you could have went with, you chose to sign with this one. So I'm wondering, was this done on purpose? Like, did she sign with the same label so she could always be in contact with him or keep tabs on him or know where he is? Because definitely, if she filed child support, um, we sure know where he gets some of his money from. <laughs> so it won't be hard to, <laughs> to hunt him down, you know, what to make him take care of that child. But, you know, I don't know. That's just... That was just weird. Like, out of all the labels, you sign with the same one that he and y'all don't get along. I don't know. I don't know. But anywho, let me know how y'all feel about that. But um, as far as Jonathan and his birthday party, it was his 34th birthday party. And who wouldn't want to party with Jonathan? I mean, Jonathan is cool. He's like really cool. I like him. He's really cool. He's really funny, really outgoing. I mean, and crazy, you know, in a good way. You know, he can he can go out, you know. Hey, he can he can bring drama sometimes. He can bring drama sometimes and he can be messy sometimes. But overall, I think he's cool. And they were having a really great time. And then Anaya showed up. I was like, look at her, you know, in that nude kind of get up that she had on with some petals and things. I mean, she was supposed to wear black. <laughs> but of course, Anaya's, you know, she got to stand out. She got to make an appearance. So she had on this nude outfit, you know, and in the dress or some, I think it was nude, you know, some kind of lace see-through something. And um had like little pink petals and stuff all over it. But um <laughs> so she did make a grand entrance. And then when she walked in, she grabbed the mic. She was like, Hold up, DJ. Hold up, DJ. She grabbed that mic. I don't know what happened. I don't know if she was really trying to sing. Um I didn't heard her sing before. <laughs> So I'm going to just assume that she was just playing around because she was like <laughs> <laughs> I was cracking up. She had the mic and she was like shaking her booty. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Stop. 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 I can't take it anymore. And then her mouth, her mouth was like wide open, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I was, Girl, bye. I don't know what she was doing. I'm going to assume again that she was just playing around with the microphone, just playing around. But anywho, <laughs> that song had me dead. I was like, 
Girl, okay, okay, okay. Happy birthday, Jonathan. Blow the candles out. <laughs> but, um, and then she'd be always calling him her gay husband. Like, you know, you're my gay husband. But, anywho, um, the celebration quickly came to a halt when Juju and Kimbella arrived. And Jonathan was pissed, like, you know, as he should be, because they knew that she was not invited to the party because they not they're not rocking like that anymore. So I don't understand why she brought it, brought it upon herself to bring her with her and invite her. But anywho, anywho, um, I still wanted to hear Juju's side of the story. So I'm kind of glad she showed up. Like, did you or did you not take his radio show idea that he had planned for the both of y'all and steal it for your own show? But before we could even go into that, um, I thought for a minute that Juju was about to snatch up Anias. I mean, I was like, Anias, a word of advice. Just go grab that mic and try your hand at singing that birthday song all over again because you about to get snatched up. But then Jonathan, he pulled Juju to the side and he was like, you know what? I got this. Let me talk to Juju. I want to talk to Kim. I, I got this. Go, go on over there <laughs> so I can talk to Juju. But when he asked her about it, you know, he brought it to her attention because she's like, why is there beef? What's, what did I do? You know, why is people telling me that we ain't cool no more? And he just told her straight up. You know, I, I, I felt disrespected. You took my idea and you ran with it for your own show. Now, what she said okay she said in her defense in her defense that the sh that the meeting was scheduled in Florida and he wasn't around but she also said you know she did mention his name during the meeting so I don't know if they gonna call him and try to have another meeting. I don't know. It's like, okay, did she try to contact him? Was he not responding to her phones, texts, IGs, Twitters, Facebook, inbox messages, texts? I mean, did she try to reach him? Did she try to reschedule an appointment so they both could come? I mean, she never really explained that part. That part. <laughs> and see, I, so I don't know. I don't know. It is looking kind of shady. I, I'm not going to call her fake yet because I, we don't know the whole story yet. And don't know right now. She went ahead and got the radio show on her own for herself. So we don't know that yet. So I'm not going to call her fake yet because I love me some juju. But then, you know what? What happens when you talk about people behind their backs instead of bringing it to their attention, instead of confronting them like a grown-up? Uh, when it's all said and done, words usually get discombobulated. Like, Kimbella was like, all in Jonathan's face. I'm like, oh my God. It was like one argument after another, after another, after another. I'm like, this is a birthday party. But then after, you know, Juju and Jonathan, you know, finished, you know, talking things out and she kissed them. She was like, you know what? I'm out. I'm good. You know what? Then Kimbella started going off on Jonathan because of something. What did he say? Uh, Kimbella, you told me that Juju was secretive. She was like, no, I didn't. I did not say that. She got all up in his face and he was like, <laughs> he was like, excuse me but i don't i thought kim bell was about to go off on jonathan i'm like oh lord juju i'm good i'm good i'm out deuces <laughs> deuces but then yandy popped up and when yandy and kim bella started arguing jonathan was holding up his head he was like like it was okay. The party was over. It was over. There was no partying left up in there. Everybody was fighting, arguing. He held up his hand and it just seemed like he was about to have a it's my party and I can cry if I want to moment because he just like did not. He All he did was hold his hand like, Lord, Lord, take the wheel. <laughs> take the wheel but um kim she was telling her you know what you always trying to act like you are miss goody two shoes but your shit stinks just like everybody else and then she was like i'm good i'm out 
deuces. <laughs> Everybody just started leaving the party and Jonathan just sitting there like, Oh my God, I was having so much fun before everybody walked in. Oh my God, oh my God. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, everybody arguing with everybody. It's kind of hard to tell who's rocking with anybody anymore. It's like a hot, hot mess. But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Um, Definitely, definitely let me know what you thought about Fetty Wap. Like, his situation... Um. With Alexis, you know, they baby been really sick. I mean, that baby's so tiny. That baby had like three surgeries and uh, oh my God, it just, it just breaks my heart. It breaks my heart when um, parents do not work together, especially when they have a child that is really, really sick. Like when that child grows up and if their parent ain't always there or, you know, in their in they life, like they were like, dang, you just left me. You, I could have died. Like I could have died and you just left me. So I really hope, I really hope Fetty, I mean, you know, these shows are recorded months and months and months in advance. So I really hope from the time that was recorded from that taping, so now, I really hope that he's doing a lot more, being a lot more involved with his daughter's life because mm, huh, that's kind of hard. But anywho, y'all, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode um, or about any of the cast members. And also let me know what you thought about um, what Kim Bella said to uh, Yandy. Because a lot of people do feel like that about Yandy. You know, Yandy act like she, you know, too good for people and stuck up and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, y'all, y'all let me know. Do y'all agree? We can bet. Let me know. Let me know. Put it in the chat. And after the live is over, you can still hit me up in the comment section. I'll get the notifications and I can still chop it up with you in the comment section after the live. And don't forget, you guys, please like the video, share the video. Make sure if you're just rolling through, just scrolling through and came across my live, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. I appreciate it. Please and thank you very kindly. And as usual, in the between time, prime time squad, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out. Peace.